Good morning, and welcome to Cab Rider Comprehensive Part 2. This morning I'm going to start really fast just to show you how easy it is to use Cab Rider to draw cabinets. And then I'm going to slow down and we'll take it easy and explain a lot of detail. I've opened up a blank SketchUp model here. I haven't even saved it yet. You'll notice it's still untitled. So when you start a Cab Rider project, the first thing you have to do is save your file. So I'll do that right now. I'll say save as. And I'm going to save this on my desktop. And I will call it SketchUp Comprehensive. Uh, course model. All right, so now I've saved my file. The next thing I can do is create a cab writer project. If I try to go to one of these tools and use them without creating a project, I'll get a message like this. No project has been created. Use menu file create project to create one. The solution to that is to start, always start every project with this icon. Create a project. And when you do that, you'll get this page here. This is the Cab Writer Settings dialog box project page. And what you want to do is fill in some information about your customer and the project name. I'm going to call this course model. And I'll update it. By the way, whenever you make changes, to the Cab Writer Settings dialog box, you must update it with the Update button. There's actually two other ways you can update things, but we'll get to that later. So I'm going to close this. Now my, I'm ready now to draw in Cab Writer. That was the setup, but now I'm ready to draw in Cab Writer. First thing I'm going to do is I know my client's kitchen is 14 feet deep, so I'm going to put a construction line out there at 14 feet. And also, this will represent, the green axis will represent, oh, I'll call it the, the west wall. And I'm going to start right away drawing. Now, cabinets are 20, base cabinets are 24 inches deep, so I'm going to draw another construction line out here, 24 inches. And let's start drawing cabinets. Uh, one more construction line. Yeah, uh, the cabinets on this side are going to come out 24 inches as well. So this is where I'm going to start drawing my cabinets, right here, along these two lines. So the, what I'll do is I'll select the story stick, that's this create story stick icon right here. Click at this intersection, come out, click again, doesn't matter where I click as long as I'm on this line. And I'll get a little dialog box that says, what kind of style do you want at this end? Well, just trust me for the moment. What I want is a left pivot connector. I'll explain that in a moment. Now, this same tool, the story stick tool, if you hit control twice, you'll get a distance tool. I'm going to come out here on this line 45 inches. And then I'm going to come back this way. And it's going to say, what kind of style do you want this time? Now notice you only have the ability to select right side styles. And I'm going to select a right end opening. You'll see why in a moment. All right, so those are my two end styles. Now it wants to know where the middle styles are. Well, again, I'm going to use the distance tool, two clicks of the control key. I'm going to come out 14 inches. And I'll come over this way, click, and it knows what a connector style width is. And you'll discover what connector styles are in a moment. And I'm going to come out here. Uh, actually, this one right here, the inside triangle. 
and with the distance tool I'm gonna come out 15 inches and this time I'll go over this side that's gonna leave me I hope if I did this right it's gonna leave me 13 inches there that's right okay I'm gonna go back to my story stick tool I'm all ready to select my cabinets I hit N, the N key on the keyboard, and now it wants to know what cabinets I want. Now notice, these are blue, so it means it's asking me what that cabinet wants to be. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make that a um, diagonal corner base. And I'll hit next. It says, what do you want this middle cabinet to be? And I want that to be a, a draw bank base. Three draws. And it now wants to know what this cabinet wants to be. I'm going to make that a standard base with a draw. One draw. And I'll say OK. And there you go. You've just drawn cabinets in CabWriter. And now we're going to slow down and take this nice and slow, and I'm going to explain things in detail. But this video already is six, it's six minutes long. And I've showed you how to save a file, name a file, save it, um, set up a CabWriter project, and draw one cabinet with three boxes in six minutes. That's how quick CabWriter is. So let's slow down now and see what hap happened here. Now, the first thing I did was I created construction lines where I wanted to begin my cabinets. My cabinets are going to be along this line and along this line. I knew ahead of time that what I wanted, because I had a lot of discussions with my client, and I knew that the client wanted a diagonal corner cab here, a three draw bank here and a standard base with one draw here and wanted that to be an opening because right here is going to be I believe a dishwasher if I remember correctly right here so this is an opening style if you remember I selected a right end opening and what the opening style does is it puts it, it's going to leave an opening here and it's going to put this little half I don't know it's about six inches piece of plywood just so that when you look past the dishwasher you'll see something finished here instead of a uh, you know a, a, a side here with holes in it and things like that so it's just a little filler this one if you remember correctly I chose a left pivot connector now, what does a left pivot connector mean? Well, first of all, since this cabinet was going to be part of a cab, or since this box here was going to be part of a cabinet that's a three box cabinet, this is a connector style. It connects this box to this box. But the left pivot connector is this one right here. It basically means from this pivot point right under here, That's the pivot point, that point right there. It's going to pivot with equal dimensions, this style over here, and create another style. And in this case, it's going to create a connector because I chose a left pivot connector. And the reason I wanted that is because I'm going to have some more cabinets out here and I want a connector style to connect those. Okay, let me show you now what CabWriter did when it drew these cabinets. It created a number of layers. It created a layer for the base boxes, for the base doors, for the base draw boxes, the base draw fronts, the base ends. We don't have any end panels right at the moment. 
but it created a layer for them. Base face frame and the base ladder. And let's take a look at those one at a time. The base boxes are essentially all the plywood that makes up the cabinet. You notice in this case, because I'm going to have face frames, the sides of each box have this dado um, so that I can align the face frame. It also has all of the construction uh, holes and what have you to connect the cabinets together. Well, actually, to, to construct to, to construct the box and hold the box together. There are actually some holes here, here, and here to allow you to um, bolt the next cabinet or box onto this one here. The same is true over here. That hole, that hole, and um, this hole are used to bolt this box to this box. These three holes, these three holes, and these three holes are for the draw slides. If you look inside of this box, you'll see shelf holes with two shelves. Likewise here. The default for cab writer at the moment and you can change this. It could be anything you want. This is a draw up here. So you have holes for the sh uh, draw pole. I'm sorry, the draw slide. And then you have this set of holes and this set of holes for the door that goes here. And two shelves. Now it turns out, in the end, this, is, this cabinet's going to be used for a trash cabinet. It's going to have a trash bucket in it. So you probably don't want these shelves. You can delete them or I'll show you later how you can actually specify you don't want these shelves and you may not want to drill these shelf holes. You can tell cab writer not to drill those shelf holes too. That'll save you some time on the CNC machine or however it is you, you drill your holes. So okay, so that's the box. At the moment cab writer, everything is done with butt joints. In version two, we will support both dados and rabbits. But in version one, it's simply butt joints. That doesn't stop you from drawing in dados in here if you want to in your model because you have the whole power of SketchUp at your fingertips. This is a SketchUp extension built on SketchUp and you can change anything you want using SketchUp native tools. All right, so that's the base boxes. Here are the doors. And there's not, there's only two in this particular drawing right at the moment. They're simple frame and panel at the moment, but they are correct as far as dimensions and things like that are concerned. In other words, if you produce a cut list, which we will at the end of this course, it will produce the right size cut list but it, right now it's a simple frame and panel and that's all we're supporting right at the moment in version one although we do support both inset and overlay doors and we also support frameless cabinets those are supported in version 1.0 okay so that's the door doors layer The draw boxes in SketchUp, or in CabWriter rather, at the moment what we do is we draw just a box. The assumption being that most small shops purchase their boxes and don't make them. They send out to a third party to build their boxes, so what they need is the overall dimensions. These boxes are correct for overall dimensions. So you'll get a report of the boxes with the correct dimensions. Now, if you want to build your own, whatever your particular process is, you can using those dimensions, or you can make a uh, an order sheet out with those dimensions for your supplier. 
So that's the uh, draw boxes. The draw fronts, very much like the face frame, they're frame and panel, unless they're below a certain dimension, which you can specify, the user can specify the dimension, below that it'll make a slab door automatically. You can also choose to make all doors and draws fronts slab fronts. That's at the, um, you'll see later that in the cab writer settings you'll be able to choose that. We don't have any end panels right at the moment, but I just might go back and change this so you can see some end panels and then change it back. This is the face frame. You'll see later, but you can actually see it a little bit here, that a cabinet can be any number of boxes. Theoretically, it can be an infinite, infinite number of boxes. Although on a practical level, you probably will be limited by what you can get through people's doors and on your truck and things like that. Uh, but the face frames are unified face frames. That is, for instance, the top rail here is one top rail, even though there's two boxes. Now the diagonal cabinet, of course, it breaks it up. But if this were a run of 10 boxes, there would be one top rail. If you were to design your cabinets with bottom rails, similarly, there would be one bottom rail down here. So the face frames um, are high-end face frames. They're not, you know, you don't get divisions here in between every box. And they're on their own level. The ladder bases for the cabinets are on their own, um, own layer as well. And this is the ladder base construction. This is hardwood. And the rest of this is shop plywood. And I'll show you how that's specified as we go along. But this is the construction of the ladder base. So when I show all these layers, I have the cabinets that I just drew. Now, let me just for the moment go back and redraw these. I have the ability to redraw cabinets and change things any way I want. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw these so that there, there is a, uh, an end panel here and an end panel here. And then I'll switch it back. It's easy to do. What I want to do is change what I, what's called the story stick. Remember, I use this story stick to choose my styles. So to change the styles and the types of end panels they produce, I'll use the, I'll right click on a, any, any part in this cabinet. It doesn't matter which part I click on. I can click on this. Right click, come to cab writer and say, edit story stick. And now it wants to know what this style wants to be. Remember, we started off with a left pivot connector. I'm going to change it to a left pivot panel. My next style is a corner connector. I want that to stay the same because, and in fact, I can't change it, because it's connecting two boxes. So it'll always be a connector. That too is a connector. Now it doesn't say corner connector because these are standard base boxes. This is a corner box. And lastly, this one said right end opening because I'm going to have a dishwasher here. But I'm going to change that to right end panel. Let me say OK. And now I've got the same cabinet, same dimensions, everything is the same except now we've got panels at the end. Okay, I'm going to back that up because this is what I really want in the, in the model. So I just used undo, backed it up. All right, so you can see how quickly you can draw these cabinets and you'll see as we go along, it's very fast. The toughest part's going to be how you modify them for specific types of
custom modifications. Okay, let's move along. I want to show you what's behind CabWriter, what it is that defines how cabinets are made. If you remember when we first started out, I used this icon to create a project. If I use it now, it'll simply say to me a project named whatever my project name was already exists and is open. So if I want to change my cab writer defaults, I need to use the edit project icon. So this is only used when I create a project. This is used after that. And it opens the um, cab writer settings box so that I can change anything I want in here. Now, Greg Larson did a video that's on our website under the cab writer training tab. And it explains in detail the cab writer settings. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I will explain it. I'll, I will explain the things that we actually use in this video. Suffice it to say that there are a number of tabs here. The project tab, as I already mentioned, has information about the client, project name, and the description or anything you want there. And then it's got some general information. This project that I'm doing is a face frame project. You can also do frameless. You can it supports inset doors, overlay doors. If you're doing overlay doors, you can specify the distance of overlay. Scribe allowance. Door and door, I'm sorry, door and draw gaps, that is the distance between doors and draws. Countertop clearance, that's basically the distance between a top draw or a top door and the countertop. The types of drilling that you're going to do, either line boring or CNC. And if you're doing CNC, you might want to specify an area, a part, that defines what a small part is. Because on the CNC machine, small parts are difficult um, to hold down with the vacuum system. So you might want to specify what a small part is, and they'll get put on a different on a different um, layer. The, the materials that we're going to use for the project are specified here. You can specify the type of material, dimension lumber sheet good or primary material or secondary material. And for each type of material, you can specify a large number of species or types. The, the, so you, you can do that for the frame, for the door and draw panels, the end panels, the back panels, the carcass, the trim and banding, the slab or draw fronts, and the toe kick. Each of those can be specified separately. The wall height, and I'll show you the wall tool probably at the very beginning of part two. I'm, I noticed that I'm running out of time here, so I'm not going to show you the, the wall tool today, but um, we'll get to that beginning of part two. But the standard wall height, 96 inches, an outdoor wall is six and a half, and an indoor uh, wall is uh, four and a half. Okay, the point is that I'm trying to make is that there's a large number of parameters. This is a parameter-driven CAD tool, if you will. There are a large number of parameters, and you, and you can change any one of them. The carcass has some general parameters, things like shelf depth clearance, shelf width clearance, so on and so forth. Toe kick uh, styles, whether it's a ladder base, we don't, um, at the moment, we don't support integrated toe kick. Ladder bases are so much more efficient and so much more cost effective. Um, and in high-end cabinets, the, they're typically the way people build cabinets. The toe kick is four inches high, three inches deep, and so on and so forth. So that's the carcass dimensions. Cut lists, 
Integrated into CabWriter is Cutlass Bridge. It comes with CabWriter and it's an integral part of CabWriter. In Cutlass Bridge, you can specify a whole bunch of things like oversizing of material, and you can do that here. That is, when you first cut something, you may want to cut it bigger than its finished dimensions for some reason. That's done here. You specify that here. Door and draw oversizing here. Uh, end panel, back panel oversizing, so on and so forth. Shaper allowances. If you're using shapers to, to cut your, uh, your door panels and things like that, you can specify a shaper allowance. Um, there's a doors tab, a draws tab, a line boring tab, a CNC boring tab. You have total control of what holes get drilled and what their dimensions are. A panels tab, base end panels, upper end panels, base back panels, upper back panels. Again, total control of the dimensions of the back panels or any kind of panel. Face frames. This is a, an interesting tab that you really need to um, become very familiar with. Right now I'm doing a face frame design. And when you have a face frame design, you want all the styles drawn. In this case, I'm not drawing the bottom rail. I'm only drawing the top rail. The bottom rail is not being drawn. So it's unchecked. But if I check this, then this dimension would be the dimension of that bottom rail. I can change any one of these dimensions. These are the styles. These are the rails. I can change anything I want here or choose to draw it or not draw it. So I can have face frame designs, I can have frameless designs, or I can have a mixture of face frame and frameless. A custom uh, frame if you want. And again, this is for the base styles and rails, and this is for the upper styles and rails. This is a very important part right here. Whenever you change these dimensions, there's a really good chance you've got to change these. For instance, if you decide not to draw bottom, top, and mid rails, you're going to have to change this because now your draw dimensions are going to have to be different. So there's a little calculator here. This tells you for a three draw bank with this configuration, these are the dimensions of the three draws. And notice, by the way, these are the, the heights of the fronts of the draws. Not the opening, but the heights of the fronts of the draws. So if I change these, there's a good chance I've got to change these. If you notice a red circle here, that means things don't work out. In other words, these dimensions and these choices and dimensions don't work out to something that's going to create a, a good design. So you have to change them, update it, and see if you get a green light. And when you've gotten a green light, you're good to go. Base cabinets. Again, all kinds of defaults you can change for base cabinets. Whether or not you use stretchers for the top or full tops, um, you know, mid stretchers, whether you use them for frameless, um, whether you have just the top draw with a stretcher or all draws. Everything here is, is um, you can specify a large number of things here. There are some cabinets that have to have special choices. For instance, the divided base, normal cabinet height, is the countertop height is 36 inches. The divided base is designed for tall cabinets. Um, although you can use it for any size cabinet, and you'll see we do that in this model. But the default for a, a divided base is 90 inches because that's the normal height of you know the top of the of the upper cabinets. But you can change it to anything you want. Similarly, uh, a blind corner base 
there's the blind corner base goes into the corner some distance. That distance is specified here. The default is 12 and 3 quarters inches. And the reason being that, you know, beyond 12 and 3 quarters or some number that you choose, you might feel that the, the client can't reach in there anyway, so you're creating a problem for them, putting, storing things back there they, they can't reach. So those are all changeable. Similarly for the upper cabinet. So this whole cab writer settings is something that you will notice as we go along will change the particular settings. The settings I'm using for this design starts out with what we call the factory settings. So anytime you change them and you want to get back to the factory settings, you can use restore or reload factory settings right here. Okay, so we're getting to the end here, and I think we're going to call it a day, and tomorrow we'll move along much quicker and begin to draw the rest of this design. So until part three, have a good day.